All right, another uh, trig application involving vectors. Uh, you can see this is the sixth one I've done so far. And I'll have some more after this also. So there's quite a few. They're all different, so check them out. All right, so let's look at this one. It says an airplane is headed due east with an airspeed of 300 miles per hour. The wind is out of the northeast at 50 miles per hour, and they want us to find the drift angle, the ground speed, and the course of the airplane. All right, let's draw a picture. All right. So we know this is north, south. Okay, well, let's do. Let's do this. Move it over some north, south, east, and west. Because we're we're going east, so we're going to pretty much be using this side of it. All right, so let's see what we've got. Okay, so the airplane is headed due east with an airspeed of 300 miles per hour. So we're heading due east, and that's at 300 miles per hour. Okay, and it says the wind is out of the northeast at 50 miles per hour. So if it's, here's the northeast, so if it's out of the northeast, that means it's blowing this way. Okay, it's out of the northeast. If it was going this way, it would have said it would have been blowing northeast at 50 miles an hour, but this is out of the northeast. So that's this. And I like, and I like to do this. I like to draw it here, the 50 mile an hour wind. Okay. And look, what we know here is if you've got north, south, east, and west, and it's out of the northeast, it's it's coming like this, okay? And what it does, it makes a 45 degree angle. And that's what it means, 45 degree angle. So, so what we know here is, we know this angle here is 45 degrees. And what we're looking for is the speed of the plane. So that's going to be this vector here. That's the plane. We'll call that vector V. That'll be the speed of the plane. <clears throat> okay, so that's going to be the ground speed. And then we need the drift angle. Okay, so, and let me see, the ones that we're finding, how about we do them in green? So we're looking for the ground speed, and then we're looking for the drift angle. Well, if this is the course of the plane, this would be your drift angle. We'll call that alpha is our drift angle. And then we're looking for the course of the plane. So that's measured off north in a clockwise direction when we're dealing with bearings, and that's theta. Okay. So the, the drift angle is alpha, the course of the plane is theta, and then the speed of the plane is the magnitude of vector v. All right, now, now that we have all this drawn, I mean, it's, it's easy to find now, so, so let's see what we've got. So let's see. Let's find the magnitude first. Okay, let's find the magnitude. Well, I've got this angle. I'm looking for the side opposite, and I've got these two, the length of these two sides. Well, that's the law of cosines. Remember, remember law of cosines, if you have a squared is equal to b squared plus c squared minus 2bc times cosine of, uh, let's just call it angle a, big A, Yeah, 2, 2 BC. See, and, and in the triangle, you've got A, B, C. This is side A, side B, and side C. See, if, see, this is what we're looking for. We know this angle. 
we know angle A, we're looking for side A, and we know the length of these two sides. So we can just plug everything in and get the distance there. All right. So we've got the magnitude of V squared is equal to the other two sides squared, so that's 300 squared plus 50 squared minus 2 times 300 times 50 times the cosine of 45 degrees. So we get the magnitude of V squared. I'm going to pause it while I calculate it. Alright, and putting that in the calculator we get this right here. But remember, that's the magnitude squared. So the magnitude of V is the square root of that number. And that is, well, it's 266.9958. Okay, so I'm just going to say it's 267. And that would be miles per hour. Okay, so that, that, is the ground speed of the plane. All right, so now let's find alpha, because look, once we find alpha, we can do 90 plus alpha to get theta. So this is the ground speed, and now I'm looking for the drift angle, okay? All right, so what can we do here? Let's see. Well, I could use law of sines. I've got, I need to find this angle. I know the side opposite. I know this angle, and now we know the length of this side. It's 267, right? Okay, see, I don't know that this is a right triangle. I don't know that. So I'm going to use the law of sines. So I've got sine alpha over the side opposite equals the sine of 45 degrees over the side opposite. So I get sine alpha is equal to 50 times sine 45 over 267. So I get sine alpha is 0.132417. And so alpha, well, alpha is the inverse sine of that. So let's do the inverse sine of that number. And that gives me 7.6 degrees. All right. So that's 7.6 degrees. And this is my drift angle. And now I need to find what? the course of the airplane, which is theta, so that's what, 90 plus the alpha, so theta is 90 degrees plus the drift angle, 7.6 degrees, so theta is 97.6 degrees, and this is the course of the plane. So there's everything right there what they asked us to find. All right, I'll have some more like this and check out my other videos. Give me a like, share, and subscribe, and thanks for watching.